Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we spent some time at Whirlberry Juxta Mare, explored the mists all around it, came up to the home bureau, and went to the, the quiet sea to visit the displeased, and managed to give them some leaflets from the cult leader at Whirlberry Juxta Mare. Gonna go back to Whirlberry Juxta Mare in just a little bit. But right now I'm at the most serene mausoleum. I want to... Uh, finish up that quest with uh, the daughter that we got out of Perdurance and lower our terror, all that good stuff. Before that, attending a funeral. I know the top one will reduce my terror, but there's not any point in that because I'm already going to reduce my terror to zero. So what does this one do? Oh, it also reduces terror. Hmm, this just gained me favor with the Deathless. Wasn't expecting that. I think we've already done that before, so I'm not going to read it. Let's finish up the daughter quest before I reduce my terror, just in case it ends up increasing my terror. We are about to speak with the Deathless, after all, and give them back their daughter who had their face changed and now no longer looks like their daughter. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Let's contemplate the dead son. That'll increase our terror. And give us a vision of the heavens. Approach the Deathless. Visit the Macabre Counselor. Deliver the Presumptuous Heiress. With the assistance of the Clairvoyant Doctress's face, you have succeeded. Ooh, oh, level 20. I noticed the experience bar didn't turn over, so I think we can't get any more experience. A touching reunion. The Macabre Counselor is as close to overjoyed as you've ever seen her. Which is to say her mouth twitches, sadly. The presumptuous heiress's response is much more passionate. She drops the hood with dramatic flair. You let a bloody monster steal my face! It's just a bit of skin, dear, the gob counselor says soothingly. But perhaps it will grow back. <laughs> if not, you should be used, used to masks by now. Okay, so... Yeah, that does make sense. The macabre counselor knew what would happen. The whole face switching thing, which makes sense because the, uh, the doctress was the macabre counselor's agent. Wow, and they were just like, yeah, fine, it's fine. Steal my daughter's face without even telling them. Perhaps it will grow back. I... Nah. That's not growing back. <laughs> what would that look like? If you had someone else's face on yours, and then yours grew back underneath it, so your face just like slowly falls off? The old one? God, ugh. Before the presumptuous heiress can continue her tirade, the macabre counselor draws you aside. Most satisfactory. You'll have everything I promised and more. Now, if you'll excuse me, my daughter and I have important matters to discuss. Yeah, not a very touching reunion. Gained a Crimson Promise. Ooh, only my third one. Three casks of Novartine gemstones. And a thousand experience. Now that that's done, can we do anything else with the Macabre Counselor? 49% chance of success. Failure. Found wanting. Gained 15 tear. Hmm, make a donation to the upkeep of the mausoleum. This will allow you to speak to the currently available mem uh, member of the Deathless immediately. Let's do that. Probably done that before as well. Let's try to speak with the cop counselor again. Success! Um, hmm, so we can't like do back and forth dialogue with them or anything like that. Um, old spider... Trespassing on a rival's web. Fingers curl into which, yeah, I think we've seen this as well. I've gained favor. Does that allow me to speak with anybody else? More time must pass for this one. More time. Yeah, can't do anything else for now. Let's get rid of this terror. Memorial to the Prince Consort. Donate souls for a private viewing of the tomb from 69. Nice. Down to zero. I love that. And I think that's all to do here. 
I'm really curious about this level thing. Is there going to be a new option for my final level? I'd be kind of sad if there wasn't. Let's see. Oh, there isn't. There's no extra option. Hmm. And what am I looking for? I guess... My god, my veils are so high. Um, I guess mirrors? Because that's the easiest one to get up to 75. This is after all the modifications from my officers, by the way. How they display up here. So it looks like my iron is a bit higher, but I think that's just because I have a lot of iron from officers. My natural iron skill is only 35. My natural mirror skill is 56. So it is actually much higher. Um, yeah, do any of these do mirrors? None of these do mirrors as their main thing. If I can't level up anymore, then I'm not, I'm in no hurry to spend my level up right now. I'm going to wait until something else opens up. You occasionally get new ones when special events happen. Um, you unlock ones when you have like more affiliation with a group, academia, bohemia, whatever. In fact, I might even be able to make new ones appear just by switching on my officers to give me more association with something. Let's do that, actually. Let's try to get the most in every single thing. So, like, establishment. Bohemia. Academia. So let's go with establishment. I don't think that's going to open up anything new for establishment, no. This is the most villainy I can get. Right now, I could get more villainy if I had the the signaler on board. The other signaler. Because this one's academia, the other one's villainy. Did that do anything? Probably not. No, in fact, something's gone. <laughs> there was another option here. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to continue to wait. On my way to London. And we have a glorious dreadnought. Was really satisfying. Uh oh. They're focused on me now. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, help me out, Albion Marauders. Now you're in my way and you're about to shoot me, I think. Broadside, yes, yes, yes. It's on fire. Oof. Are you both shooting me? Come on now. Yes. Dreadnought. Don't need to reduce my terror. Search the crew quarters. Failure. Ooh, I lost a crew. But I gained a pane of stained glass and lost strength of the sun. That's good, actually. Mm. This actually might be new. At the heart of the golden engine, you discover a chapel. Freestanding panes of stained glass transform the Dreadnought's stark light into washes of prismatic color. Most were broken by the violence, but one remains intact. The corpses of the crew litter the brassy floor, their hands still clasped in prayer. One of your companions cries out suddenly that the Dreadnought's light has made her blind. Back in your engine, you remove her goggles to discover that her eyes have turned to glass in their sockets. Oh, I'm so sorry. No reason to serve it for parts, because I'm about to go back to London and repair. Search for valuables. Roll of Thirsty Bombazine. Break into the captain's cabin. Uh, actually, mm, let's hope that doesn't take up hold space. It did. Enough to 
jet something, barrel of unseasoned hours. Uh, I don't want to jet fuel because I'm pretty low. Let's, I guess, get rid of supplies. All right, back to London. Holy shit, I just got into a fight with a dreadnought? Where I just really did terrible... Oh my god, look at my health. Fucking hell, I almost just died from a basic-ass dreadnought. We're good now. Back at London, fully repaired ship, hired more crew, put away stuff in the bank. Also took a prospect, because we're going to be heading to Worldbury Juxtamare after this to visit the cult, now that I've helped recruit new members from the Quiet Sea. Um, there's a prospect to deliver five panes of stained glass. An exuberant architect at Worldbury Juxtamare intends to construct a glass hall to house a public exhibition of curiosities from across the heavens. Unfortunately, I only have four, but it'll do. Who knows, maybe they'll sell them at Worldberry Juxtamare as a bargain, <laughs> so I can just sell them right back to them. Okay, let's see about the signalmen. Have they done anything? No? Remember I was really confused about the uh, continuing their quest? Their personal quest? I said to give them shore leave, but I've done that and asked them to curry favor with the ministry. Or no, I asked them to curry favor with London's industrialists. And that didn't do anything for the quest. So this time I just left them here doing nothing in case that would do it. And it doesn't seem it's done anything. Maybe I just pick them back up. I don't know. Hey. What was your request again? When we next stop at London, I'd like to take shore leave. This is London, yes. That is definitely London. Wait, wait, wait. What it says in the journal is very different from what it says when you talk to them. Let's pick them back up. Here it says... He has been cooped up in the derelict Isambard line signal boxes for a long time. The signalman wants to visit a quixotic squire near the Ministry of Public Decency. You know, I think what it means is that I need to go to the Ministry of Public Decency. And then from there give them shore leave? Which is weird, because you can't normally give them shore leave from there. Very, very strange instructions. But I think this is it. Yes. Ah. The quixotic squire inherited his family's wealth, doubled it by founding Port Avon, then squandered it all on a folly, the Isambard Line. The signalman has found the squire's family home, but it has passed to another, also struggling, aristocratic household. The gutters leak, the windows are cracked. Perhaps they know the squire's fate, but the signalman is uncomfortable talking to nobility. When you knock, a bleary baronet answers. No butler. Times are hard. Offer to make certain urgent repairs to his home in exchange for information. Three bronze wood. Three panes of stained glass. Leave or use my affiliation with establishment. Three. Ooh. George, is that you? You have extensive society connections, and the baronet, it seems, is one. You should be able to get the information out of him with only a conversation's worth of gossip. Down on their luck. He shows you into his shabby parlor. The felt on the chairs is worn bare, and the cups are cracked. You politely fail to notice and steer conversation to the squire. The baronet bought the house following the squire's bankruptcy. The squire's wife fell ill around the same time, and the squire retired to care for her during her last days. They retreated to the last of the squire's holdings, a modest residence in Port Avon. The signalman seemed surprised. He weren't much of a husband. He said he was in love with the Reach, and that's why he were putting a ring around it. <laughs> the Isambard line putting a ring around it. I love it. Okay, so we need to go to Port Avon. Do we need to speak with them anymore? Where does he wish to go next? 
to find the squire in Port Avon, the baronet said. Also, do I want them instead of a repentant devil? They do give me villainy and gloomy guidance and more mirrors compared to veils. I don't really need much more veils. So yeah, let's go with them. Also just checked if their new villainy allowed me to get enough villainy to do a different level up thing, but it doesn't. On the way to Whirlberry Juxtamare, bringing you back for this little unexplored spot here. Oh, is this just solid building, this whole thing? I love those purpley lights. Yeah, I think that's solid building. Damn. so big, I feel like I should be able to dock there somewhere. Looks like it's about to blow. It's just like a whole industrial place. Whirl of Ajax to Mare. Ah, oh, we have another the Mists of Whirlberry thing. Last time I offered sanctuary aboard my train. Hmm. This time let's join the Song of the Mists. It rises from the crowd, spreading slowly. As the final harmony dies with it, or, uh, the mists recede, as the final harmony dies with it, peace is restored. Even the memory of the song and your part in its choir fades from memory. Looking down, there's something in your hand. A doll embedded with many small sticks and bound with rope. It has no face, but its stare is no blanker than those on the faces of the people surrounding you. That is very creepy. Now we have a cursed doll. Wonderful. Oh my god, they have a bargain for caged catches. I'm going to buy every single one of these. When I go to leave, let's get rid of my four stained glass. I'm not going to be able to complete... The prospect, unfortunately. I guess I'll keep it. I don't need the space for anything. Right, we can go just directly to the off season. Hmm. I kind of want to go to the main thing, though. I want to gain more insight into the weirdness here, just to see if that leads to something other than what we've already done. I mean, I have seven ministry stamp permits. So let's go. Do a hat again. Thank you, thank you. Explore a tiny lane bedecked with shops. Lowered our terror. Okay, this is new. A residue persists from that last cup of tea. A flavor like roasted chestnuts and the color blue. Like absinthe brewed in the belly of a star. 
belly of a star? That's not what we're in, is it? There's literally a place here called the belly. <laughs> mm. 60% chance of success. Let's do it. The sour tang of that last sip resides in your palate, in the oily coating on your tongue. It is like, but entirely dissimilar to, the more familiar teas of London. It would go magnificently with a fresh scone, some aunt-manufactured jam, but the aroma is fundamentally incorrect. The citrus notes mingle with a nostalgia for a time that's never been. The warm spices heighten the anxiety that bubbles with every sip. This tea remembers how it will come to be made. It is a struggle to ignore the details. This tea remembers how it will come to be made. What does that mean? We gained some tea. Great, don't drink it. And a vision of the heavens. How's our uh, clothes doing? Now nah, we're probably fine. And what is this? Attend an exclusive exhibition of portraits. I need four affiliation with Bohemia. I might be able to do that. I have to leave first. But for Bohemia. Oh, yeah, I have three attired for Whirlberry Juxtamere, so we got plenty of time left. I don't have the patchwork devil. Yeah, I can probably get four Bohemia, I'd bet. I'll keep that in mind after I, I'm done with this one. Wander onwards. Ah, wiles of a rubbery lump cellar, sure. Mm-mm-mm. Well, there's another strange taste that I can ponder. Yeah, I don't think it's going to do anything different. I think I think the main point of that stuff is just finding the off-season. So let's slip over to the off-season. Let's feed the lanes a bit. Sure. Sky story and a tale of terror. Let's go to the beach. Visit the cult. Report back to the parson of your work. You did what you were told to do. Time to tell the parson. If you take this choice, you will no longer be able to work with the Bureau of Entertainments. They will not trust you. That's fine. Fuck them. We have... The bedraggled parson warbles, fingers steepled over his mouth. He weighs the next word like a heart on a scale. A transfer. And there are more coming to our doors. The cult of the displeased is generous. Generous indeed. After all, we are the same, united in the study of suffering. Thank you. They who must grieve know you now, and they wait for when they may offer you their gratitude. <laughs> Great. Two Savage Secrets, an unlicensed chart. Agree to commune with the Scorn Fluke. It's a Scorn Fluke. Yes, there is 100% a connection between Scorn Flukes and the Scorn Fluky looking eye things that appear in the mists around here and the mists in Whirlberry Juxta Mare. Uh. Let's do it. Commune with the Scorn Fluke. They who must grieve sent a dream. In it was your face wreathed in brass and kelp, and your eyes were the color of stars. I do not know why they've asked you for this honor. They who must grieve are gods, and we are but the bacterium birthed in the gases of their breath. But I know they dream of you, and I know they would have us dream of you too. He passes you a bell. Verdigris green and smooth as sea glass. Despite the clarity of its surface, your reflection is absent. Enter the mists and call them with this. Commune with the fluke in the mists. Oh god, is it going to be one of those eye things? Oh boy. The parson leads you away from the corpse church and towards the edge of the beach. 
the mist reaches for your ankles. Oh, I thought I was going to have to actually take my ship out into the mists. Prepare to meet them. You march to the circle of waiting cultists. In silence, you are tethered not to ropes, but to filaments of green leather. Your wrists, your ankles, the joints of your arms and legs. These are lovingly encircled. It is surprisingly painless, even comfortable. The bedraggled parson himself fits a noose about your throat, his eyes hot with worship. Somewhere far from you, you can almost hear weeping. Thus secured, you grasp the signal cord and nod to the cultists. You're rolled over the edge and lowered into the mists. This is not terrifying at all. Not the thin leather filaments holding your body. Not the jerky descent into the fog. The cottony silence. But at least the cheerful cultists at the shore seem optimistic about your chances. Uh, if I abandon the descent, you'll be able to return, but you'll have to go through the descent again. No. We're good. We're in a good position. Terror-wise and everything, we're good. Signal to go lower. You bounce your left wrist twice. The ropes slacken and you plunge with terrifying speed. The mists seem almost bilious the further you go, enraged by your encroachment. It churns and swirls, making faces or what something that has never had a body might believe to be faces. Eyes bloom like so many flowers, accompanied by swirls of teeth and tongue. It's all illusion, of course. A trick of the cognition. Maybe. So it's describing the things we've seen out in the mists, just popping up. I'm not sure about swirls of teeth and tongue. I don't think we saw that, but... Um... Certainly saw the eyes bloom like so many flowers. Go lower. Another quick tug on the rope. You go deeper. As you plunge further into the mists, the phantasms acquire more solidity. Serpentine bodies, piscine forms. Now it is an entire ecosystem of them. Ouroboros, hmm, I know what that is. It's Ouroboros, Ian, but I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Ouroborosian, Ouroborosian, and hungry and indifferent. Now they are the faces of those who'd forgotten. Now they're bodies, teeming with coral and glittering beetles. Now they're watching you and they're smiling, baby teeth bared between feathered antennae. So they're amorphous. Go lower, be lowered into the very depths. One more tug, you're almost there. The mists become a... Oh, what is that? It's Chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro, the treatment of light and shade in drawing and painting. The treatment of light and shade in drawing and painting. The mists become a Chiaroscuro of hard shadows, halogen, and ink. The writhing halts. Almost, it feels as though the mists might be holding its breath, might be waiting, might be watching you. Or perhaps they're watching something else. Something brushes against you. A barbed tendril wider than a grown man is tall. It explores the filaments holding you, touches them softly, even as an eye swollen and crimson and colossal flashes briefly into view. Well. Ooh. Soothe the scornfluke, silence its grief. Is this because I've already communed with so many? <laughs> Commingle your choirs. I just read a comment just like an hour ago of somebody saying that commingling your choir sounds like a sex thing. It sounds very suggestive. It really does. And this makes it sound like they're just really leaning into that. Commingle your choirs. Um, let's look at all these options. Behold the fluke. Through the tenderling mists, a scorn fluke regards your approach. A cyclopean presence over encumbered with its spare corneas. Or soothe it. You weep in sympathy. How could you not? Nothing in the high wilderness could ever be lonelier than the scorn fluke. Complete the cult's ritual. The parson gave you the bell for a reason. It's time to serve a purpose. Hmm. Or return. 
So yeah, I can return. Even if I return right now, I could come back down later. It's good to know. Um, well, I think, I feel like I'm going to get to do all of these. So let's behold it first. Something is very wrong with this scorn fluke. For one, it possesses an eye, red stained as though it had spent eons in ceaseless lamentation. The scorn fluke, its species usually possessed by a jagged geometry, looks diseased. Its body warped and weeping with cancers, cysts of unnatural dimensions. Aberration that it might be, the scorn fluke remains a primordial revelation, ancient and so steeped in anguish that the air itself twists in commiseration. This isn't pain as mortals know it, uh, as mortals might know it, but something almost holy in its vastness, an entire cosmology of suffering contorted into a being. How are these things made? Let's soothe it. You stretch a hand toward the nearest spine. It trembles at the contact, the oil black calcite rippling. Suddenly it is more tar than gleaming obsidian, viscous, ravenous for the warmth that lies embedded in your cells. Rills of black matter spread and grow, tugging at your arm, and almost you can hear it. The scorn fluke's loathing. It's need to be something, anything but what it is. Just as abruptly it releases you, there is only the echo of its despair. Let's complete the ritual. Use the bell. You ring the bell. It sounds like nothing, like the absence of music, like the glissade of breath before a soprano raises her voice to sing. It sounds nothing like that. And then, all at once, the scorn fluke is pressed close, skin's width away. It is a diseased thing, pustulant and lacking in geometry, cysts and cancers like an ache, uh, and an ache like a heartbreak that has had eternity to turn septic. A tendril of black ichor extends to stroke your face. It is all you remember before suddenly you're at the surface again. You've done as the parson, as the scorn fluke wished. Somehow this will help the cult prosper. <laughs> okay. Something has changed. Something in the gasping air, the texture of light, the smell of whirlberry juxtamer. Perhaps it is the diminished presence of the bureau officials, how their swagger has tautened to fear. Perhaps it is the number of tourists with glass in their eyes. Their smiles like they'd caught a fever bright. The cult grows. You've done everything you can. The cultists take you to the off-season, a parade of laughing faces, their most anomalous features swallowed in colorful silk. No reason to frighten the locals, after all. It is a party at the chapel, all the joyousness of a birth married to the fanfare of matrimony. The walls shudder with a melody so profoundly strange that it grinds through the axial of your bones. There's something in the air, too. A smell as sweet as summer and more intoxicating than love. It clings to you. It may stay forever. The cultists laden you with praise and presence, reassurances of a radiant future. You have accomplished a deed. A new facet will be unlocked for your future captains of this lineage. Oh. I guess that's the first time I've done a deed. Huh. Whoa, I got a whole bunch of stuff, too. Uh, a Crimson Promise. 2,000 experience, not that that matters anymore. A Caged Catch and Foreign Kenny Specimens. So I assume there's nothing more to do here, right? Like, if I go back to the cult... Join their ritual. Uh, what do I need for this? It is not yet time for the cults for nightly ritual. Okay, so more time. This will eventually get you an otherworldly artifact. Hmm. Have a word with a parson? Anything new here? His voice is water. Warm 
hypnotic. Ah, there is a new light. To his fever-burnished stare, a hunger deep as the throat of the sea. We are rejuvenated. When I sleep, there is another edge to their songs, something better than before. You could not have cheered the scorn fluke, could not have saved it, but it got something of value from you, and the parson knows this. Yeah, looks like we're done. Back to the off-season. Back to the tourist part. Oh, that's going to take another ministry stamp permit. Mm, no, let's just leave. Next thing I want to do is buy every single one of these cage catches and get these precious things into my bank in London. <laughs> Come here. Almost 1,200 coin. Things that glide through Whirlberry's ghostly sea of mist are not, let's face it, fish. But if we call them fish, we don't have to think about what they actually are. Recently, a school of them was found grounded on the port's pebbled beach. What a sight it was, a local remarks wistfully. The stars are shining on their membranous wing fins, their mouths all gulping for the vapors. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, bye, I'm going back to London. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, back at London. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, frankly, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do. We've explored almost all of Albion. Don't think there's much left to do here. So, perhaps go to another region. Perhaps finish up exploring like a couple of these pretty big patches of, of blackness, like here and here, maybe there. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs>